What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. Okay, so in Marvel Comics, when it comes to reality warpers, there's a lot of them out there. But if I'm being honest with you guys, Clyde Wincham, like the Marquis of Death, is just, re like he, he tops almost all of them. Like you could count on one hand the number of people who could successfully defeat, or the number of beings who could successfully defeat the Marquis of Death. So the origin of the Marquis of Death was originally that he was a guy named Clyde Wincham. And he was just like, he was a, a kid who was born in, in a universe where he was the only one that had any mutant powers. And they were reality warping powers. But the idea was that Clyde Wincham was, this, he was this, this guy, this kid who was born and his dad had died when he was younger and so he resurrected his dad from the dead and his mom freaked out hit him over the head gave him brain damage and he spent the rest of his days in an asylum now along the line while he was in this asylum the nurses took his comics away and so what he did is he took the superheroes from the main marvel universe and brought them into his universe he literally plucked them out of the main marvel universe and brought them into his universe and so people were starting to freak out they were like what in the hell's going on here like captain america's a comic book character how does he exist here and so that turned into everybody tracing the the origin of this back to Clyde Wincham, Reed Richards figured out what was going on. And then he basically said, look, man, if, if what you want is to, to live in a world of superheroes, then we'll bring you to our universe. And so they did. They, they brought him to the main Marvel universe and they stuck him in this place called Area 87 and a helmet was put on his head. So he would just have like these perfect dreams for all eternity. That was the original story for Clyde Wincham. He was just supposed to be written out of existence. And that was the end of it. All right. Fast forward to like Mark Miller or Mark Wade's run on the Fantastic Four. I can't remember which one. And there's just like this guy in the future. Right, like just like this dude in the future who literally looks like a walk. He looks like Skeletor. He's just like a walking, talking skull, and so on and so forth. When he, when when Marquis of Death is first introduced, he's in this alternate reality where he and his apprentice have killed everybody on Earth except for Reed Richards and Susan Storm, I think, just to torture them. And then, like in these moments, they sent the sun to supernova, destroyed the world, and then, like with a wave of his hand, wiped out the universe. And he and his apprentice left. I mean, it was it was it was insane. It was just like a wave of his hand, and the universe just gets a obliterated and it's just like christ like that's some living tribunals type stuff right so the marquee of death shows up in the main marvel universe right it's just like okay let's like where's our where's our next stop we're gonna go to the main marvel universe because it's like the great cleansing or something along those lines when the marquee of death and his apprentice wipe out all the population of, of an of an earth and so they they go to like the main marvel universe and they confront dr doom and dr doom like recognizes the marquee of death and that's when you learn a lot of the skills that dr doom learned over the course of his life came from the marquee of death and it kind of worked because in dr doom's original origin he learned like his initial understanding of sorcery from like mystics and then you didn't really know where he gained like the rest of his, his magical knowledge you just knew that he did and then just kind of went with it i mean you assumed it was just his own independent study but like the marquee of death is like his teacher basically and the marquee of death is like you bring shame because you've been constantly defeated by the Fantastic Four. And so like Dr. Doom freaks out, right? Like Dr. Doom goes to attack the Marquis of Death and then like all the Earth superheroes show up and attack the Marquis of Death. And and, and it's insane. Like like it's like this, this massive coming together of the entire superhero community. And like, like every superhero, every super, like the whole nine yards, every person with powers shows up and attacks the Marquis of Death and Dr. Doom wins, right? Like, like they defeat the Marquis of Death and it's just like, damn. So like, like Dr. Doom is champion is like this hero of the world, right? Like Reed Richards dies in the process like a lot of people die uh dr doom marries susan storm and they have a kid together and then that's when you realize the whole thing is an illusion from the time all the superheroes came together and all the supervillains came together to defeat the marquee of death until the point when dr doom is talking to susan storm it was all an illusion all those years he lived was all an illusion not only that only five seconds had passed and the marquee of death is like this is how hopelessly outmatched you are you don't stand a chance you never stood a chance and then like like from that point like literally opens a time rift throws dr doom into the mouth of a shark into the mouth of a megalodon shark and then just goes back and it's just like let's kill everyone and so it's just like damn like it's it's dude it's it's it's, it's insane and so like then he shows up to the baxter building and, and like goes to the Fantastic Four and just starts systematically torturing the Fantastic Four, right? Like he shows he shows Johnny Storm like all the alternate reality versions of Susan Storm that he killed. He tries to get Reed Richards to kill his son Franklin. I mean, like, like it's, it's all these crazy things that go on. And so Ben Grimm, the thing, ends up going to Area 87 and grabbing uh, Clyde Wincham and then bringing him over. And what you find out is when Reed Richards originally took Clyde Wincham and took him to Area 87 and then dropped him off, that at some point after the present day, which is to say when this huge fight's going on, that's some point in the future all the villains attack area 87 and they free clyde wincham and then clyde wincham kills them all and then clyde wincham goes into the future and event like he, he goes on to eventually become the marquee of death the marquee is clyde he's just a future version of him and so it's basically present day clyde versus future clyde and future clyde wins and the result is that you end up finding out the apprentice is actually dr doom like it's been dr doom the whole time somewhere along the line that when dr doom was thrown into the past and eaten by like a megalodon shark that he survived and spent the next like millions in 
and millions and millions and millions and millions of years, modifying his physical form, enhancing his powers, so that later on in the future, when, when he encountered the Marquis of Death and became his apprentice, the Marquis of Death wouldn't know it was Doctor Doom. And so from, from that point, like when the Marquis of Death realizes that it's Doctor Doom he's been talking to this whole time, like he begs for his life and Doom is like, shut up, and then just kills him. Just like, just, just wipes him. But the only reason Doctor Doom was able to kill him was because Clyde Wincham Jr. weakened like the Marquis of Death enough that he could kill him. This is why the Marquis of Death could never exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because like, like imagine Avengers 4 ends and imagine that like the curtain gets pulled back and you end up realizing that all of this has happened in the span of like one minute. When I say everything, I mean like the entire life and times of Tony Stark, the whole life of Captain America, Natasha Romanoff, all those characters. That in reality, Natasha Romanoff is like a shopkeeper in Russia who's like overweight and 40 and like dreams of being like a world-class assassin. Captain America is this, this 15 year old kid who gets bullied all the time and Tony Stark is a failed inventor and Bruce Banner is a, is a guy who, who had dreams of becoming a scientist and just like failed out of every chemistry class he took. And like, they're, they're all just like regular people. And just out of sheer curiosity, just to kind of have fun, the Marquis of Death gave them like this perfect react, like this, this unit where they became everything they wanted to. And they were fighting against insurmountable odds, Thanos with the infinity gauntlet and all that kind of stuff. And they won. And then it's just like, no, this was all an illusion. I was just having fun. All these movies in the MCU all took place over the span of like one minute. That's possible with the Marquis of Death. And that's why you wouldn't be able to work in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is because like with all the characters that we've talked about to this point, they've had reasonable weaknesses. The Marquis of Death isn't like that. Like the Marquis of Death is invulnerable and indestructible and, and like on a scale of absolute power in terms of like, where where he resides like if we had to adjust the marvel cosmic hierarchy with things as they stand now in reality i would put like the one above all the beyonders and then the living tribunal and then maybe off to the side of the living tribunal the marquee of death and here's here's the reason why okay so so take take like jonathan hickman's avengers and new avengers you have the beyonders who are going through and they're just like annihilating the cosmic entities like hank pym is sent out into the into the multiverse to try to find the source of the incursions and he says i found them the white lords of wild space the ivory kings it's the beyonders and 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 he's like he's like all hope is lost and it's like well what do you mean we can't like there has to be a way to beat them it's like no we can't beat them like i was floating in the universe and i just kind of wandered into some universe somewhere and i saw the beyonders just annihilating all the cosmic entities like that that entire universe just shattered into a million pieces and was totally wiped away by the beyonders the living tribunal shows up and the beyonders destroy the they destroy the the representation of the multiverse i watched them do that captain america you can punch really hard what are we gonna do against power like that but even then like you look at the beyonders you look at them and you say okay it took three of them to destroy the living tribunal and then like the way it's explained by hank pym it was difficult for them to do like not really difficult but like it took time for them to destroy the celestials and like the the cosmic entities and so on and so forth and those are beings that reside in a singular universe the marquee of death waved his hand and wiped them all out cosmic entities and all waved his hand that means that like in that universe galactus the silver surfer all the superheroes who existed on any one particular planet like the molecule man who would exist in that universe franklin richards who would exist in that universe protege who might exist in that universe like all those characters just wiped away by the marquee of death and that's assuming they even existed in that universe in the first place you know that's to say like protege and molecule man and so on that they were equal to their to their selves in the main marvel universe but like making that assumption that like you're talking about an insane level of power and there's no conceivable way that character could be defeated in the marvel cinematic universe because it took his present day self in order to weaken his future self enough for dr doom to be able to defeat him i mean it was it was absolutely bonkers like so far in the marvel cinematic universe the most powerful thing we've seen is thanos with the infinity stones that doesn't matter against the Marquis of Death. Thanos would show up and I've got the Infinity Stones. You could have all the Earth superheroes who would all band together. And Thanos would show up with, you know, with, with the, the Infinity Stones. All the X-Men, right? Like every single mutant on the face of the planet Earth and like everyone who could be an Avenger, every superpowered being that you've ever heard of in Marvel Comics, they could all band together and face off against the Marquis of Death and it wouldn't matter. He would still destroy them all. Like there's there's no conceivable hope for them to win. Like there's there's no possible way they could defeat that. The Marquis of Death is a character, you know, you know what? The Marquis of Death is a character you bring in when in like 500 years, Disney and them are finished making Marvel movies and they say, how are we going to destroy our multiverse or destroy everything? We'll just have the Marquis of Death wipe it all out. Like that's when you bring his character in to the MCU. It's a crazy display of power. I mean, there's no real conceivable weaknesses to his character aside from like his counterpart in the past. And that's really it. It's kind of crazy. It's, it's kind of bonkers. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.